that today is the 4th of July and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. That is the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. And then you know what to do. Press start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Odd Shaped Panel. And uh, we're going to be talking about video games. It is the 4th of July, so there is a firefight happening outside the window. Uh, there was a firefight! Um, also, we have been taking some really cool suggestions from you guys for future subject matters for OSP. And uh, we already got like five or six new ones, but we're still taking ideas for those. So if you guys have any more, go ahead and tweet us at Odd Shape Panel, and I would love to hear them. Hello, Jack. How's it going, guys? Some entrance. Oh, it's fantastic. I get in a fanfare. I was hoping that that would be the exact moment they did the finale. And it would have been like, oh, Jack's here. It'd be, it'd be epic, but I don't think anyone would be able to hear your answer. So it's... That's true. Uh, the first question we got was Austin at uh, Weird One asked, if it could be done right, what video game would you like to see adapted to film? Uh, that's a great question. And I'm going to say The Last of Us, uh, which was a PS3 and then PS4 exclusive title. Um, the Last of Us is a, isn't quite a zombie game, although it's zombie-like. Uh, there's a viral infection that comes through a fungus, and it makes people sort of mind-controlled uh, to mindlessly kill everyone, essentially. Uh, but it was one of the most amazing games I've ever seen uh, with a, a really good soundtrack that would translate well to film. Um, uh, what I really like about it is is just the way, as a player of the game, they've they established the atmosphere and the characters very early and they never let up. Like every single character you meet in that game has personality. Uh, so when we got to the end of that game, you felt like you really went on the, the story journey that all the characters went on. And if they could do it right, I think that would be an amazing film because zombies, the zombie genre is a little oversaturated right now, but it's a different take on zombies that I think could go over really well if they take the video game path to it. So. That's my first choice. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Heavy Rain. Um, I don't know if oh, any of you guys have played that game. But good choice. Games. Yeah, it, and it's kind of, it's like a serial killer story, and you play as several of the characters, and you're trying to, like, solve the murder and, and almost, like, save the kid, too. He, like, takes your kid, and you have to try to save your kid. But it's like a choose-your-own-story type of scenario, like, where the stuff that you do affects what happens in the game. And it is almost kind of like a movie in itself, and, and a good one if you ask me. It's got like this really heavy, like, tone, kind of like Seven, it reminds me of. Yeah, And I yeah. think you can actually use something like that um, in movies right now, and I think that would be cool. I would definitely go see Heavy Rain if they could do a, a good job. That was the first game I ever played on PS3. I'm not really a PS3 gamer, so I, I, I haven't played a lot of PS3 titles, but that was the very first game I tried on, on a PS3 when I got it, and it was amazing. It's that I'm um, talking about diversity in characters. Um, we've never seen a gay character like Captain Shepard on, in Mass Effect, and I think he would be an amazing character to bring upon a conversation of diversity. And there's never really been a, quite a massive gay hero as Captain Shepard. He's like really badass, he's tough, and he's really cool. And like that would be an amazing character to have as part of a, a, a cinema movie. Any of the Nintendo properties, I feel like if they could be done by done right, like they they would be great. They've always had good stories. Um, I was, but yeah, Zelda has always been one that I felt could turn be a good like fantasy 
a high adventure movie and it could be it could be good i don't see why it couldn't be just nintendo just needs to turn over the rights a little bit i think would it's there, time would there be a specific uh story from a game that you would want to concentrate on um i think if they do they should go ahead and just start out with ocarina of time like it's kind of like in the middle but it's also like the one that branches out the timelines to every different like possible future and or past yeah it kind of explains the multiverse yeah pretty cool but i'm gonna say my favorite video game of all time uh ocarina of time specifically and um i'm saying that because that's just like to me the best zelda game like you know that's um self-contained but also has the possibility of setting up a sequel because you know the split timeline and everything Young Link and everything, and Majora's Mask, which that would be a eh, sequel because Majora's Mask is, and it's an it's all right game. But uh, yeah, I would love to see a uh, Ocarina of Time. Because he's the Triforce Zelda, so I would love to see Zelda as a movie. I know they had like an animated series like a long time ago. This is the Triforce of Wisdom, Link. Back in like. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was like right after the Mario show, so they had a Mario cartoon and they had a Zelda cartoon. And I used to always watch those and love those. But uh, if they made like a, like a live action movie or something, I think that would be pretty cool. Or even like a, a good animated one. But um, I'd like to see that because just all the lore behind it and like all the lush environments they go to and the story is just awesome. Outlast has become like a really big sensation, and there aren't enough horror movies. Outlast is where you have to survive in a mental institution and so on and so forth. So is it that. A yeah, yeah, it's survival. So I think that would be my choice. I'm going to go with Borderlands, actually. And actually just start with Borderlands 2, because Borderlands 1 is good, but it's not super cinematic. Um, not nearly as much as 2. And the, the story is really good. And they can they can do it uh, right. I mean, look at Star Wars, the original episode 4. They, they had this whole world with characters that existed before the movie started. And then they just kind of went with it and then eventually they made the prequels but we don't even have to have those so you could have all of the elements of Borderlands 2 and be like yeah this was a thing beforehand etc etc and and eventually just oh Tiblet don't <laughs> um, the bad one just came in shot <laughs> but uh, they could do it in such a way that it would work really well because a lot of the characters in 2 are really good uh, Zero and his ability to speak only in haiku <laughs> I just speak in haiku. I would uh, adapt the first Uncharted game into a movie. I love that game so much. It's my favorite in the series. I haven't had a chance to play the fourth installment yet, but I do have the game. I'm just lazy. Sorry, I'm very sad. <laughs> but that story is just so great, and it's just like a standard, like, oh, we're treasure hunting, and this is the relationship between Drake and Sully is so hilarious. The writing is really witty. And then when you get like about like a third through the game, it's like, wait, like what is this turning into now? I was just, I was totally blown away the first time I played that game. I, you know, out of nowhere, it's like these creatures are coming after you. And I just think if they could do it right, it would make an amazing film. Like some people think it's just like Tomb Raider, but if you play the game, I'm seeing all the likes right now. <laughs> if you play the game, you see that it's like nothing like Tomb Raider, and it's actually a really good original story, and the graphics help a lot too. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, my second choice was Mirror's Edge. I don't know if anyone's ever played that, but I thought that would be a really cool movie if done right. And for my third choice, because it's I I noticed it specifically said if done right. I have Prince of Persia because that was done terribly. <laughs> I promised my brother I'd kill you if he couldn't have you. Well, the solution would be to kiss me and then kill me. Okay, um, I picked Bioshock. I was obsessed with that game, and uh, when my friend, when it came out, my friend, her girlfriend had gotten like a big flat 50-inch screen TV that like was 3D, so I had the glasses on and I was playing the game. And then I saw the Big Daddy come out and I like threw the controller, I was not prepared. But I would love to see them and the little sisters like just going ham throughout the whole entire thing. And like that would 
That would be really interesting. Uh, I'm old, so Twisted Metal. Yeah! <laughs> Who do you want the book? Um, my favorite was always Axel, and yeah, Axel and Sweet Tooth, I think, were the two that I think would make an amazing, like, backstory main focus, but they could go so far with Twisted Metal in every way. Joe at Drake Masters asks, what is the best cross genre game? Well, as you know, my handle on Twitter is JRS Hip Boy 2008. So I really can't not pick the Fallout series. Now I'm gonna pick the whole series on this one. I'm just edging it all out because we have to talk a little Fallout real quick. Um, Fallout 1 was a uh, turn-based isometric 3D RPG game. And no one was making a game like this before. It was it was R-rated in content. Uh, it, it was heavy on story, uh, seeped in pop culture, nostalgia. Uh, all with like a third person isometric um, uh, combat system, which was really innovative and different uh, at the time. And they made two of those. Actually, they made three. A third one was like a tactical game, but it doesn't really count as part of the series. And then they revitalized the series with Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, which took the game into a first person shooter RPG. But what's amazing about this um, is that the comp Bethesda evolved the story and said like what do gamers today how do they want to play and are they really going to be receptive to this isometric third person you know view no they're you know most people want first person shooter but we don't want to lose the rpg elements so they managed to take turn-based elements from this game and create it into the uh into a first person shooter essentially they called it that's where you could actually slow the game down and choose where to target on an enemy is really cool and that innovation brought Fallout from the computer into the console markets in a big way. And then Fallout 4 just came out and just upped the ante even more. I mean, as a as a cross-genre video game, it hits so many elements. It gives you the shooter, it gives you the RPG hardcore. Uh, it gives you it gives you sort of a turn-based strategy feel to it. Uh, it has a build it has building elements now. You can create settlements and stuff like that. I love the Fallout series. I always have. It's why my name is Pip Boy. Um, and I think it's, for me, it's, it's probably the best. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have to pick one of my favorite games ever for that one, too. And I'm going to go Little Big Planet. Uh, I love Little Big Planet. Uh, it's basically for, I guess, like, it's a platformer, but at the same time, it's a puzzle game. And at the same time, it's a level building game. And they have a whole community with people who do amazing levels. Yeah. Since 2 came out, it's gotten pretty crazy what you can build in those levels. Um, we haven't got to 3 yet. We've been playing 2 recently, but I'm sure that it's probably gotten even crazier with that. But that's going to like have some of the best replay value ever. Just being able to like jump into other people's levels and see what they're doing. And, and especially when you have like your own individual experience with that game, there's a lot of ways to play. And that's one of the best, in my opinion. People take... People have taken that game and they've taken the the platformer elements and have completely turned it on its head so that it's not a platformer at all. Like they they like oh we want to make it like an RPG game so it they do and they build it. It's amazing. Community uh, in that game is fantastic. Minecraft and it's the game that I was literally just playing like two minutes ago. And the reason why I think it is is because you could really do anything in Minecraft. There is nothing you can literally do. There's nothing you can't do in Minecraft. Basically, you build cities and, and, and sets and basically computers and televisions and it's a really big open world game. I would have also said The Sims as well which is another great because well what, what else can you do in Sims and I think The Sims is a great way of thinking about um, your own story as well and and looking at your own story and yeah. Portals like I love that game like it's a first person shooter but like it involves puzzles and i've always liked puzzle games as well and i think that it's a good like mix of both the thought put behind it because like you're like you're fighting these robots that are just throwing spewing bullets at you but then they go and explain yeah. that that's because they just literally like there's no cartridges they just dump a bunch of ammo into the robots and then they just they fire off willy-nilly like yeah not to mention like again the story is so great in that and it has so much like 
like iconic jokes that she says. Then lie on your stomach with your arms at your sides. A party associate will arrive shortly to collect you for your party. Warcraft 3. Nice. So, that's pretty standard though. Like, I'm... Has anyone else said that? No. Oh, wow. It's, well. uh, yeah, I definitely... Because the appeal of Warcraft 2, um, besides being a RTS, which was fun, and being able to click sheep multiple times to make them explode... <laughs> Um, definitely kind of translated into Warcraft 3 while giving it like a weird like quest plotline. It's definitely the foundation for World of Warcraft. If I may play it right now, it's currently out and there's a new expansion coming out in September. Uh, it's gotta be Destiny. Uh, Destiny is, I guess, the same creators as Borderlands, I guess. And uh, so it's a shooter, a first person shooter, but it also has RPG aspects. So like you're constantly leveling up, you're leveling up your weapons and all that. They have raids, just like World of Warcraft and stuff like that. So. I, I really like that. It's just so fun. See, I want to say Destiny, but right now it's really kind of not my favorite. Um, yeah, Rise of Iron, they, they really need to save themselves with that because they're losing a lot of people real fast. Destiny is such a good attempt at like an RPG FPS blend, but it's just... They're constantly trying to balance back and forth between them, and they're not trying to blend them well enough. Do you have... Well, I mean, so then what right now is your favorite, if not... Well, I mean, Destiny, but it's not... Okay. Like, I'm mad at Destiny right now. I don't really know if it counts, but Borderlands? I mean, that's more of like a... Um, oh, I love Borderlands. It's more of a, uh, it's an open world, first person sort of thing. I mean, it's basically the Diablo shooter, is what a lot of people consider Borderlands. Uh, yeah. Heavy uh, uh, RPG elements with a action-oriented first person shooter. So that does count. And uh, it's just stylized in such a way that it's very, it looks very cartoonish, but it also... It's gory as hell, and it's just, it's so fun to play. It's pretty easy yeah. to get into, especially Borderlands 2 for me. That's where, yeah. uh, you know, I fell in love with Hat Handsome Jack, who is also one of the best villains. And probably just the best character of Borderlands in general. Borderlands, I think uh, we were talking before, it, it feels like a cartoon Mad Max. Like it does, and it's so much fun. And Mad Max is already so much fun, and it's a dark movie. So I mean, it's dystopia. So, but this they, they make this dystopia fun. And again, that's that's a lot with the characters. You have even like the little side characters with like the mechanic and salvation, and they're all hilarious. Now, if you're here to kill me, you should probably know you'll never take me alive, you robotic son bitch. Probably StarCraft, if only because it crosses it crosses the the RTS. It's got the sci-fi. It's got a lot of what you would consider like fantasy-ish elements with the the mysticism and and that kind of stuff. Stardew Valley, which is a a farming sim, but it's also like a uh, like a dating sim and uh, like a little action adventure game where you get to. Like the main goal of the game is of course improving your farm, but you also need to build relationships with people in the town and try to get married because you get more, uh, you get a better reward at the end of the two year time period uh, if you do get married and start a family. But there's also like a cave to explore and like monsters to fight and you get um, like more rewards for like the deeper that you can go into this cave. It's basically, it's kind of like taking the Harvest Moon premise, but like, you know, going up a, uh, up several levels. Mine was Persona 4. I know there's a couple of the Persona games, but Persona 4 was um, my personal favorite. I love how like the way that it starts out is just like you think you're in a regular RPG of some high school kid in some rural area in Japan and then like 
somebody's murdered and then like you fall into some tv shit and it just gets <laughs> crazy like you never know what's going on you have to take tests during this as well so not only are you fighting demons and falling through tvs and things like that you have to take a test and pass it in order for your character to do good so that throughout the game you have to like so that your character can fight these demons later what's the best classic arcade game now as we know i'm old and uh, classic for me is when I was a kid. I'm gonna go with Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair was a Don Bluth game that was unlike anything else you saw in the arcade uh, in the 80s. Um, it was amazing. So it was the only game that was 50 cents. Uh, every other game was a quarter back then, but, but Dragon's Lair was 50 cents. And when you put in, when you masochistically put in 50 cents, you were about to waste a lot of money on Dragon Slayer. So Dragon Slayer was was a cartoon. It was animation where other games were pixelated and everything. They act, It was an animated game. And you played... Oh God, I wish I could even remember the main character's name. Um, oh, someone help me out. Uh, what's... Dirk. Dirk. Dirk the Daring. Thank you. Uh, you played Dirk the Daring and you had to rescue a princess from a dragon. And it was, it was different from other games that you played because uh, you'd see Dirk moving along the screen and then prompts would come up. And you had to quickly do the prompt uh, with the joystick, either up left, uh, up left, down, or right, and the, or attack. So there was only five controls, but you had to basically watch this animation and figure out what you were supposed to do. So he'll, uh, the whole scene would be like a puzzle. And you, in order to get through the scene, you had to do the correct key buttons. And now, like nowadays, there's a whole guide that's like, okay, if you're on this board, you go up, down, right, left, you know, attack. But back in the day, you had to memorize all of the, every single type of screen you could possibly get into. And you didn't know which ones you'd get. Everything was randomized. So no two play styles were exactly the same. So yeah, Daphne, Daphne's the princess. Um, so when you would play, so if you would start fresh, you would not necessarily have the same game you just had. So memorizing the order that the gameplay would take uh, was not the uh, way to go. You had to memorize the scenes because you may not see that scene halfway through the game on your second playthrough. It might be completely different scenes. And to continue was also 50 cents. So not only was it the best, it was the most expensive for a kid, especially. I mean, you, <laughs> this is the only game you were playing because it was going to take all your quarters just to get through it. But but it was so innovative for its time. It was so different. It was unlike any other game that you were playing in the arcade back in the 80s. And that's why I loved it. So I'm going to pick Dragon Slayer. I don't know if it's the best, but one that I grew up playing a lot um, because, because of my parents, like especially my mom, was Centipede. And I've, always, I've just always really enjoyed playing Centipede. Um, my second favorite would probably be Asteroid. And it's just, I, I've, I, there's a lot of those classic arcade games that I like to play. Like, we have a place here, um, it's basically a bar, and they have all of the old school classic arcade games. And, like, every beer you buy, you get 50 cents worth of tokens to go play games. Nice. So, there's a lot of like places here in Raleigh that you can do stuff like that. Asteroids. And, for the re and the reason why I said Asteroids is that... There was no other game that I think you would play apart from maybe Donkey Kong that would make you so pissed off by the end of the game that you wanted to actually attack the thing and maybe probably go to bed because of hitting something like Anze. Um, no, um, but no, I just thought it was a really interesting game. It's like, it's, it's a game that I grew up with. Does anyone remember like the X-Men beat-em-up like side-scroller side -scroller game? We had this mm -hmm. place in, in Honesdale called Fun and Games and it was just a wall of like video games. And I would always be online to play the X Men one. I love Nightcrawler. Um, that he is a bam. I yeah, play. I definitely never have heard of that game. Oh, it's awesome! You can play as uh, Colossus. I know all about that game. Yeah, you're mighty. Nightcrawler, like it was all like the second generation X Men, and I think Storm was in there too. A Storm was definitely in there. And I don't remember if there was a plot, but I definitely liked fighting the dude. Yeah. The only thing that would have made that game cooler is if my crawler had swords. But I'm not. It, it's all right. It's all right. I'm got. I'm gonna get over it. Yeah, I think my favorite like classic game has to be like Tetris. Maybe I don't know the history behind Tetris, but I do know that I'm freaking awesome at Tetris, and that's why I love that game. <laughs> All 
All right, so Street Fighter, I picked Street Fighter, and the reason I say that for Classic, I'm not talking about Street Fighter 2, I mean, a new challenger appears, that first one, like, where it was really bad graphics, but it was still a fighting game, and I just wanted to throw one of those Hadoukens all the time. It's like, oh man, I wish I had this game, I could throw a fireball at people. Then when I realized the story behind the fireball, I'm like, ah, I don't really want to throw a fireball at people. What I always waste my time on, I should say, is Rampage. And I always chose uh, the big lizard guy because I love Godzilla. And like, there's a King Kong guy, like a big ape, like George, Lizzie, and then there's like Rap. And they remade it recently, not recently, but they made, remade it on Nintendo 64. I remember renting that and just playing it over and over. It's just grinding in my childhood. I'm, I'm gonna go with the Simpsons arcade. It was brought up earlier. Uh, I mean, it's it takes the like old school Ninja Turtles ask beat them up and and add some new elements and it's of course it's the Simpsons and each character is fun and unique definitely a little more unique than the Turtles were in the Turtles arcade games not that those weren't fun but you know playing Bart has a completely different feel than playing any of the other characters or Lisa or Homer or Marge yeah like I remember Marge's uh, weapon like she like hurls like the or like she uses the vacuum cleaner and it's like it's really hard to like uh handle that character because of like there's like some weight to it um yeah that's definitely a fun one and that's the one that i picked as well i love the simpsons arcade like they actually have a arcade of that in our town like at a, a mexican food restaurant it's like oh simpsons arcade like i think i want to go play that mine is pac-man are you ready for batman <laughs> it's just time to go that's because um Growing up, my mom had a storage unit um, that was left to her by one of her older relatives, and inside of it was one of the old school Pac-Man um, video games. Pac -Man! So she had that growing up, and we played it when I would go to my grandma's house, but when her house caught on fire, we lost the game. But dun, dun, dun. Um, my mom, at when um, Walmart used to sell the little joystick games that you can just plug into the TV, they had like the million different arcade games. Like we would fight over who would get to play Pac-Man first. So nice. That's always been my favorite. All before Pac-Man, feel his glory, feel the glory of Pac-Man! For mine, like, I also had Pac-Man because that's a classic and I don't get tired of that. And Rampage is also a really good one. Um, I had Geometry Wars, but that's not really a classic, but it's themed like a classic game. I really fucking love that game. That game, I never get tired of that. And it's like, has cool, like, techno music going on in the background. <laughs> There's all these the macho yeah. shapes. Like, it's crazy. I would, I had I that on my them. Xbox in my old apartment. And, like, I, have, I had friends just Did come you? over and just play that for like hours and it's just like they like got mad stopped and like all right see you later i'm like all right my mom had me hooked to galaga or galaga yeah. depends on who you ask on that one but um that's a game you could just throw quarters at for hours just hours and play so and uh great shout out in avengers batman is playing galaga thought we wouldn't notice but we did And it's pretty much the like the foreshadowing of the plot at the end of the film where it's just aliens coming from the sky and they have to bow. Uh -oh. Yeah. So who's who's your favorite video game character? Um, this definitely harkens back to the my answer to the first question and it's gonna go with Link. Um, like I Zelda's always been a big big game in my life i've always enjoyed it so with nostalgia involved like link will kind of always be one of those characters that i will always really enjoy playing as um other than that it'd probably be charizard from pokemon <laughs> But <laughs> that also consumed a good portion of my life. Yoshi was like the first character that I loved when I was like five and I still love him now. Even when I play like um, Brawl or um, um, uh, Melee, Super Smash Brothers, I will always choose Yoshi. Don't know why, probably always the terrible thing, but amazing character.
character and I love how in the box art, like the Japanese box art makes him look slightly different than the American one. It's like, I think in the Japanese version, he's like supposed to be angrier looking. Well, he's pink. And then in the American one, he's always portrayed as being happier. I mean, look yeah. at Yeah, he's, uh, he's always my character when I yeah. play Super Smash I was Brothers. Say, Kyle, so. Kyle mentioned how he was always Yoshi in Super Smash Brothers. I'm always Well, he was cool because he would like spit him out and he would like absorb their power or whatever. And he could yep. fly, which was yes. an advantage in that game. So it's like Kirby all the way. It's me, Mario! <laughs> it is. It's Mario. Uh, I thought about this, and I'm like, there's so many there's so many characters, but no character has been more impactful to my youth and the, uh, for the reason I'm still gaming today than Mario, uh, Nintendo's Mario. I played every single Super Mario game that came out. Every single one. Uh, 1, 2, and 3, Super Mario World, uh, Galaxies, um, uh, um, what's the one with the Super Mario Sunshine, which by the way is a great game if you've never played it on GameCube. It's hard to get now because you have to have a GameCube. But uh, it's the only reason I still own a GameCube because I wanted my kid to play Super Mario Sunshine. It's the greatest game. So Mario has had a huge impact on the way we play video games, the way we platform, the way we look at uh, gaming in general. And he's expanded to the point where it's not just platforming games. I mean, he has Mario RPG, Paper Mario, the uh, Mario Maker. I mean, there's so many Mario, Mario, everything. But uh, even though he's maybe oversaturated, like maybe Nintendo's kind of lost their way of how to use him now, he has, I mean, he carried the video game industry on his back for a decade at least, so, Mario. I'd have to go with uh, Sephiroth, because he's just, he's so badass, and like, he just had like awesome, like, um, every scene that he was in, like, was just really cool, and like, the best, like, I remember the best, um, uh, FMV sequence with him was when he's walking to the fire, and I always like I had that as my background for a while because um, I was just so cool of him walking to the fire. And just to add to that, like I think he, like they did a really good job with him in the Advent Children movie because I like I really because after seeing this, I mean, spiritual thing wasn't that great. Like I, as a fan of Final Fantasy games, I didn't really enjoy it that much. It's okay, but when the Advent Children came out, I was so excited for that because you know they had like all the normal characters I used to from Final Fantasy VII, and I remember him having this line where it was like. Um, Tell me what you cherish most and give me the pleasure of taking it away. And I was like, wow, this guy's like such a badass. Like, I think that they protected him so well, you know, bring him over from the video game to that. And like, I'll never forget, like, Sephiroth, he has an awesome sword and all that. So it was just it was a really cool, like, villain. And like, whoever, anyone was talking about Sephiroth being, like, the coolest, um, no, it's it's got to be Kafka. Because Sephiroth is basically, like, like, and I don't mean to this to mean his character, but he's, he's like a, a kid with daddy issues who was given quasi godlike power as where kefka is legitimately psycho psychopathic and he's basically like a, a second in command you don't even expect him to be a big threat in the game and the, he's the villain of final fantasy 6 by the way i don't know if i, I mentioned it but yeah kefka from final fantasy 6 um what you think is going to be the end of the game is where your party goes to this floating continent to stop the emperor of the evil Geshtal empire from uh attaining godlike power from these three ancient statues. Well, Kefka's up there with him, like, right next to him, and Kefka's just like, yeah, you could do that, or, and then he stabs the Emperor and throws him off the continent, and then becomes the godlike creature himself, and proceeds to destroy the world. Did that, because, like, one through five, the villains were all these, like, nebulous, relatively godlike entities that have existed since the beginning of time with quasi deity powers that are just like yeah i'm an entity of evil and i'm just gonna you know show up every few million years and wipe out the world and stuff but kefka was the first one to my memory in a final fantasy game that was legitimately like just some guy who slowly acquired power and then took it took a stab at his boss and took over. these things are amazing seriously i've been i've played the crap out of both of these and they are pretty much like uncharted but camilla luddington she does a great job as Lara, and she's um, she's familiar, but not like so new that it feels like a different character. You know, she's just like she's smart, she's brave, pers persistent, and just the kind of person that you would want if you 
ha had to survive. Probably her and Nathan Drake could build like a Robinson Crusoe sort of treehouse thing if they put their minds together. I'm um, honestly I'm surprised nobody has said it yet. But uh, Master Chief, a huge Halo fan. Um, it, surprisingly, I actually started with Halo Two and had to go back to Halo One. Yeah. Because of that and just playing so much, I kept going through the story modes and kept going back and back. Mine is Rapid 99 from Jet Set Radio Future. If anybody remembers that game, the neon, blue-haired, hot pink fishnet wearing skater girls who had like the little booty shorts. Like her dance moves were amazing. I just, while she was asleep earlier, I was watching like gameplay and it just brought back the greatest memories like they did all their intros and their little dances and i was like i want to see this game again i want to play this game again i wrote down was kratos from god of war as my favorite character because i remember he was very enjoyable to play as because his control he had like a lot of functions and options but the controls weren't as confusing as some get other games what an incredible episode. That was amazing, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming through and, um, you know, being involved or just watching. It's great having you. If you want to talk to Kimber at all, if you like anything she had to say, you can uh, tweet her at SJPlusJunkie with an IE. And um, you can message me on my other Twitter at I am Tom Riddler. But honestly, I'm usually always logged into the Achoo panel. So, eight, seven. Six, five, wave. <laughs> <laughs> wave.